The following is a presentation of iRacing on PTR-TV. We'd like to thank all of our channel partners for their support. Please like and subscribe to the channel, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast. As another season winds down in the Red Sox Racing League, we head to a track that I'm almost certain that we've never head to before here on the channel. The Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course has been in existence for many a year and has held many forms of racing, and tonight the Red Sox Racing League finally takes their turn here in Lexington, Ohio. Welcome everybody to PTR TV for tonight's coverage of the race here and again excited to give you the call from a track that i don't think i've ever called a race from before so uh, it's gonna be myself corey silva in the booth as usual here on the broadcast and i will be in the booth and in the production truck here with the calls bradley unfortunately had to uh, be elsewhere but he'll be with me next week for that race but uh tonight it'll be me with all the calls here get round number three of the spring gt3 series season and we have a full field of vehicles one of the bigger series we've had a, a 28 guys here uh, currently on circuit right now for qualifying here at the mid-ohio sports car course and as our preliminary times come in ryan robertson no to no surprise is top of the board thus far with a 121 85 but you can see the variance from p1 to p2 is not very big there is definitely some competition to be had tommy ryan there in second he had a great run at sebring last week he had a second place run in the bag unfortunately for him he ended up bidding it on the final corner and put himself into the not the final corner on the final lap he ended up bidding it and that took him out of contention so um he ended up getting i think a fifth or a sixth place out of what should have been a second. So he's gonna to wanna to tidy up those mistakes there. The Mitch Heller, who just didn't have it last week at Sebring, he is gonna to look to get more on pace with what we see with him. He is gonna to wanna to get up there and um, make some noise. And he's only about three tenths of a second off of the pace of Ryan Robertson. So I do have some faith that uh, Mitch Heller will have a little bit more uh, speed um, in his car here this coming week but again being a, a track that we don't cover too much on the channel i'm very hard pressed to believe i've ever actually done a broadcast here i really don't think i have is uh going back red sox racing league history here but i don't think that i have here on the channel but let's bring up bring up our track map um, so that way you can uh, get a scope of what this circuit does entail here uh, 13 turns around and about 2.2 miles not the longest track by any stretch of the imagination uh, but the track layout here the elevation change is very difficult here um, the keyhole is here right at the top of the hill leads you down onto a straightaway uh, one of the longer straightaways but that keyhole it ends um, it's a downhill right hand corner um, so as uh, we'll follow with Mitch Heller here, we'll go on board with him. And you'll see as he goes into the keyhole, hard on the binders, right hand hairpin, but the track falls away from you. So you really can't see where you're going. You don't really know where the exit is until you get there. And then you head down the back straightaway. This is uh, the alternate start line for some cars. Uh, the kart series used to actually start their races here back in the day on this alternate start finish line. We don't use that in iRacing. But now you head into the S's, and uh, the China Beach right here is the sand pit off in this corner, um, off to the right side of your screen. But this is a very technical complex here. You go down a hill, um, getting the car set up for an alternate direction here. Very, very slow. This really tests the wheel spin. This really tests the throttle control that these drivers have. And 
I'll tell you, this is just a trap dive out of this corner right here. You go up a hill, then immediately go down a crest, and the car gets really light and really easy to spin out through that sector. Come through the back end of the trap, eight and nine, and uh, through what is deemed Thunder Alley, which leads you down into the final carousel here that concludes the lap, turns 12 and 13. Very, very short straightaway here for the pit straight. And then you have turn number one that has that curve, that curve very easy to hop, very easy to get a penalty by cutting it too much. So uh, this will certainly test all of these drivers' skills um, over the course of the season. So. I uh, have to keep that in mind. In regards to the point standings here, I don't have the graphic made, uh, but we have Mitch Heller currently leading the point standings by two uh, over Mark Wilson, Sheldon Rosenbaum in third, but you do have to remember there is a drop week uh, that is not yet calculated and that'll get calculated in, in a few weeks time. Again, all of the races on the schedule, all six of them are eligible for the drop. So we will. We'll have a vague idea of the point standings um, as the season does come further into uh, its existence here, but always have that little bit of unknown because you never know what could happen in race number six. So um, there's two or so minutes left in practice and those other races here on the season. Uh, very quickly, just to let you know where we will be on the last three of the races, we do go to the Watkins Glen, which is you know, that is a track that every driver knows intimately, so that is usually one of the most competitive races on the season. Race number five gonna be at Hockingheim and then back to the streets of Long Beach at the, uh, I think at the same time, and IndyCar will be there in real life there uh, towards the middle of April, but still got some work to do here. Again, with a 28 car grid and then pushing uh, series highs here with the Red Sox racing league really really quick turnaround because you have to remember mid late last year we were pushing maybe not last year but two series ago I think we were in the teens low 12 13 I remember there was a race at Willow Springs we only had about 12 cars turned out so I don't know what the secret sauce has been from an advertising perspective but they have done some uh, they have done some really impressive work fill these grids out because there's a lot to love within this series again we have the 30 percent uh approximately ish i know every car is a little bit different uh 30 percent fuel loads which does give us the pit stop uh there is one fast repair as well and the driving standards in this league are uh impeccable compared to many you will not see any intentional contact these guys have the utmost respect for each other but as I have been rambling on, I will tell you that look at the qualifying times. They have tightened up quite immensely here. Tommy Ryan, uh, he is only just a whisker off the pace of that pole position by, from Ryan Robertson here. Uh, he's only off by uh, three tenths of a second, three hundredths of a second even. The yeah, 121,826 is the time to beat and he's coming through uh, four, five, and six leading down the hill into the S's. This lap will count if he can finish it. He is coming down to the end of that lap right now. He's now coming through Thunder Alley, or just about there, exiting turn number nine right here. Now down the hill into Thunder Alley under the bridge. You gotta keep it on the track. That was close. I don't know if he got it off track there. He hasn't uh, given up yet on the lap, so very well may not have uh, gotten a penalty, but let's see what happens coming down into 10, 11, 12, into this is the carousel, exiting the final turn. Let's see, is this the time to beat? Start, finish, gonna be close. No, it won't be as close as I thought at 23-3, so looks like that'll be a second place for him on the lap. Now we have our cooldown lap. So anybody who's still on a live lap, this will count. Um, if anybody is on circuit, Tommy Ryan, um, I think this lap will still count. Ryan Roberts is still out, turned some laps for practice sake. Robert Barrows has got himself up to third. And he's only about two tenths off. Mitch Heller back to fourth, uh, four tenths off the pole. But again, one lap speed, not going to matter too much here. Ryan Roberts and pulling it into the pits. One lap speed, not gonna matter. This is a track where driver mistakes will certainly come into play. I don't expect this to be a, a track where you can really take every any lap for granted. You have to be on high alert. Again, this is Bill Paul Lucky coming down um, 
Turn six into the S's with all the downhill undulation, slow corners, hard power opportunities, getting that car back up to speed. This is just an opportunity for everybody to make mistakes over and over again. So I really expect that to come into play here. And uh, again, these drivers have to be on their games at all times here. Again, Mark Wilson here on circuit. He's seventh, only about six tenths off for the best time of a 22.2 pulling off with uh, Dave Hill, his teammate there, and just uh, behind him. He's currently ninth on the board. Les Turner rounding out our top ten in the Batmobile. But this is uh, the end of the qualifying time where everybody pulling off here and uh, finishing off their laps. Again, if the lap is already... If it's not already live, it doesn't count. So these guys will uh, just prepare themselves for a few seconds and we'll get ready for tonight's race. Again, as the timer rolls down to zero, I want to thank everyone for tuning in here to PTR TV. If it's the first time, don't make it your last. Hit that like and subscribe button here. We just hit 1,200 subscribers on our way to 1,300 we just need your help to get us there. So just take care of that for us. Greatly appreciated. But these guys heading down onto the grid for the starting lineup. And let's go ahead and join them and give it to you. The PTR TV starting lineup here today from the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Getting today's race started from the front row is going to be Ryan Robertson with that 121.69. Tommy Ryan going to be in second. Sheldon Rosenbaum in third with Robert Barrows going to be in P4. P5 finds Mitch Heller with Brian Irby in 6th, 7th Mark Wilson, and Andrew Humphrey in the 8th spot. Our top 10 will round out with two Canadians. we got Dave Hill and Les Turner. 11th will be Robert Seneville with Reed Rundle in 12th. 13th finds Dennis Griffin and then Nathan Lafayette in the 14th spot. J.P. Phillips and then Todd Marin Pietri, an Ohio native. This is essentially a home track race for him. He's going to be rolling off in row number eight with Jim Graziano in 17th. And Jeff Ryan going to be in 18th. Jerry Miller, another Canadian in 19th. Another Canadian row with, for that matter. Row number 10 with Miller and McCarthy. 21st, we'll find Bill Paul Lucky with James Prostell Jr. in 22nd. Gerald Livingston in 23rd with Kevin Kyle going to be in 24th. And then rounding out our last two rows, we got Bryce Moyer, Ed Sutcliffe in 26th, and then Aaron Law and Greg Harris. He is going to be shotgun on tonight's field. So we're going to have a very abbreviated pace lap as we already are on Thunder Alley uh, in between turns number 9 and 10. So uh, we will not have a very big run up to the checkers here to start today's lap. So. Uh, good thing we got that done. Our weather conditions here from virtual Lexington, Ohio, 78 in the air with a very hot track temp um, of 106 degrees and a 45% humidity and no track moisture. Uh, they're, they're fiddling with the rain settings, but we are not going to be using them quite yet. Uh, I think they're going to be doing a wet practice and kind of a drying line for the race. I think that's going to be what it is when we do implement it. But we're not quite there yet. Bright, scunny, bright, scunny, bright, sunny skies here from virtual Ohio. But coming down through the carousel, the pace truck will bear to the left here as Robertson and Ryan will try to stay side by side. The green flag will fly and everybody will get themselves around the corners and start today's race off here at Bit Ohio. Bearing down into turn number one, and I'll tell you, Tommy Ryan making like two trailer park girls. He's going around the outside here. Ryan Robertson, our pole sitter, is not in the ideal spot coming down through the keyhole. Turn number two, and that's going to be a lead change here right off the bat. That's not something you see. Tommy Ryan put a dent in the armor of Ryan Robertson, and he's going to get himself in the lead. Million dollar question, does he have the car to keep it? Heading down the back straightaway for the penultimate time here. We're going to head into turn number four. And Robertson, he's trying to get it back. And Robertson gets into him there. He drove it a little bit too deep into Tommy Ryan there. And that's going to allow Sheldon Rosenbaum to take advantage of the situation there. I wouldn't be too happy about that if I was Tommy Ryan. A very rare mistake. And you know Ryan Robertson's kicking himself. He does not like to drive like that. 
Very unfortunate that that happened. We'll check it out very, very quickly on the PTR TV replay. We'll go at it from our top-down perspective. You can see this is coming in to turn number four. Hard on the binders. Very easy to overcook it there. And very, very lucky for Tommy Ryan to keep it on circuit there. He very easily could have been off into China Beach here. But back to live footage. And uh, Ryan will be in fourth. Mitch Heller got to third. And Sheldon Rosenbaum. The present was under the tree, and he unwrapped it there, took the lead from that opportunity. And we'll see if he has the pace in that clean air. Um, he didn't have it in qualifying. He was about maybe six tenths off the pole. But let's see if he could take advantage of this situation as he is about a half second up coming into turn number two, down off of the corner exit and down the slipstream opportunity. Ryan Robertson is going to have to you know, recalibrate his break points here heading down this straightaway. He's going to head down into turn number four and try to figure out, he, you know, got down a little bit easier there and gave himself more wiggle room. And this is an opportunity for mistakes to be had going down the hill there and losing that uh, rear end, or at least the opportunity to, to lose the rear end. Now you head through the S's and Sheldon Rosenbaum, he has, he's got some kind of pace. He hasn't lost it yet. Uh, a little bit of dirty air on the nose of that number 210. Uh, a little dirty air off that Ferrari onto the nose of Ryan Robertson's Porsche. Uh, Maybe uh, hindering him in some capacity here. Do have a trigger here on my back end that Mark Wilson had some problems. Oh, teammates going around synchronized spinning there in the keyhole. That is not something you expect to see. But again, that just shows how difficult that corner was. Teammate there, Dave Hill, uh, an optimistic dive there into the corner, and it did not work out. I did see on the back of the shot there last time through the carousel, uh, back into the circuit, Ryan Robinson went a little bit wide. That gave Sheldon a little bit more room to play with here. Now he's upwards of about a three-quarter second lead, and now Mitch Heller... He has the opportunity here to make something happen. He is only about a half second behind Ryan Robertson here. He's seen Ryan Robertson making some mistakes, not something that happens too often. Robertson kind of missed the first right-hander there entering turn four here. Now this is where mistakes can be made quite significantly in the S's. And it looks like Mitch Heller running a lot more consistent there, both of which appear to be faster than Rosenbaum. But Rosenbaum running a pretty wheel here. Even if he's not the fastest, he's running good enough. And a little bit of dirty air through a very technical section of the track will make it difficult for the second and third place guys to make their moves. But um, that will put more importance on that pit stop timing it. Making sure you don't take too little, too much fuel and whatnot. But let's just try to go through the field. Let everybody have their uh, moment in the sun here. Brian Irby closing, or rather being closed in on by Andrew Humphrey. That is sixth and seventh spot. Les Turner, he started 10th. He is now up to eighth spot, moving up a little bit through the field. You got Reed Rundle and Todd Marin Pietri here. This is uh, just 10th and 11th spot. They're having a, a, little, a little duo here for this spot. Looks like uh, Reed Rundle's gonna look high. Now he's gonna look low and turn the key. Oh, you will keep that car in line here. I am keeping an eye on the gaps up front, not missing anything at present, Reed Rundle again. Now he'll exit the keyhole down the straightaway, trying to get a little bit of tow, see if he can close in on Marin Pietri. Looks like he'll keep it in line for the time being, just as I say that. No, he's going to optimistic dive, and I do think that perhaps uh, Marin Pietri kind of just opened the door and let him go. And uh, may have been the safest approach there. You got Bill Paul Lucky and uh, Jerry Miller there. And uh, that's 18th and 19th as there's a pretty significant uh, group of vehicles here in the back end of the field. This is uh, all the way in the back. We got a little gaggle here. We got Aaron La, uh, Ed Sutcliffe, and uh, Dave Hill. Dave Hill and Mark Wilson. Remember, we just saw them have their issues. And now they're relegated back to nearly shotgun on the field. So Wilson. Uh, probably still fuming. I would want to be at the team luncheon after this one. But let's go back to the front of the field here. Lap number four with uh, six minutes into today's affair. And the top three are within seven tenths of a second of each other. And Tommy Ryan is trying to claw back. But Mitch Heller is right to the rear spoiler of uh, Ryan Robinson for second. And it shows that I think that number 303 
may be the upper hand here today on sustained pace, but coming out of the back straightaway, this is a DRS zone that denotes that this is a long straightaway. Of course, we don't have Formula One, but it just lets you know when you see a DRS sign, we have a long straightaway here. Hard on the binders for turn number four. And a little switch back. Rosenbaum's lead has completely decimated down to nothing. Uh, this is a, a top three battle you'd see at a NASCAR track as close as they are, but we are road racing on a very technical circuit here with the top three within a half second of each other. This is not really a place I would consider making a pass. And I do think that uh, Mitch Heller did heed to that advice, not an opportunity where you want to make a move. And I do have a trigger James Prostel Jr. having some issues. Uh, he was inside of another driver there. A little bit of contact sent him off. No harm, no foul there. Just lost the track position. But back up to the front and exiting turn number one. Now in, or rather exiting the final corner in the turn number one. And now we'll head up the straightaway up the hill into turn number two. Again, Sheldon Rosenbaum inherited the lead by that opening issue between Tommy Ryan and Ryan Robertson. It just, the seas parted. Sheldon Rosenbaum had the lane. He had the opportunity, took advantage of it. And six laps into the race has not, has not been passed, but here comes Ryan. He has an optimistic dive. We saw what happened the first time he did it. I think he's uh, found the braking zone when he's making an overtake and he makes that pass successfully. Mitch Heller is just trying to fight his way through and follow through uh, by Rosenbaum, not able to do so. Now this is gonna be very critical I think for Mitch Heller's remainder of the race. I think he is faster than both of these drivers, but he needs to get by in a timely manner. Now that Robertson has the clean air, if he can get too big of a lead, it could be insurmountable, and Mitch Heller may not be able to overcome it um, you know, without uh, some kind of a pit stop issue, but Sheldon Rosenbaum, don't count him out. Robertson seemed to miss the final apex there and or Sheldon Rosenbaum overdrove it. I'm going to go with option B there that Rosenbaum overdrove it because he slowed himself up. And here comes Heller, optimistic dive, side by side through one, tight quarters, a little bit of a door tap there, tight quarters racing, not much space. They'll remain side by side, heading up the hill into turn number two, into the keyhole. Sheldon will back off and give heed to Mitch Heller. So Heller got by without losing too much time. He is six to eight tenths of a second back, depending how, uh, you know, what part of the track they're on. And now let's see if he can eat into this lead by Ryan Robertson. I do think Heller is the faster car from what I've seen, but, um, you know, anything can change. And don't count out uh, Tommy Ryan. He was probably fuming on lap number one, but I think he is, uh, you know, cooled off and got himself back to, you know, get in his rhythm. And, you know, he did qualify second for good reason. He has pace. He's right with these guys. He just needs to eat up that gap. And Sheldon Rosenbaum, you know, he's fast, but he's just not upper level. He was able to play some solid defense, run some consistent times for the first eight laps, seven laps. But ultimately, I think the uh, the cards are falling where they were meant to fall. And Rosenbaum kind of in that fourth, fifth spot, probably where he should be. Uh, but he's still playing good defense. Tommy Ryan wants to get by before the top two uh, get too far away. But Ryan, uh, but rather Rosenbaum, just has that good defensive opportunity there. Going back into the field again, Marin Pietri and Rundle, they have been um, you know, kind of playing flip-flop with that 10th position. And uh, Rundle's still in it. But I do think Marin Pietri is better on certain positions here on the raceway. And Robert Seneville in that bright green number uh, number nine Ferrari he is just tag along and is he just in front of them? That's Nathan Lafayette. Oh, did something happen to Reed Rundle? He got really loose there. I think exiting the keyhole and, or maybe he got a slowdown of sorts because he had to relinquish the spot to Marin Pietri. So now he's gonna have to do all that work he did. Well, he's got to do it again. And uh, we know how frustrating that is for a driver. But uh, going back to the front here, top three. Uh, that is Tommy Ryan. And he is really making some serious headway uh, upon closing in on Sheldon here for that spot. We'll pull up the battle tracker. Last time by, Ryan significantly faster. 
uh, but he was getting passed that time by was Sheldon. So now this is a clean lap, so we'll see what the actual variance is as they cross the stripe, a 22-6 to a 22-6. Dead even with a hair going to Rosenbaum there, so that's not what Tommy Ryan wants to see, but yeah, Sheldon is no slouch here. Um, he is very well deserving of being in this lead pack, and Mitch Heller is just clawing ever so slowly. Last time by, Ryan was actually a tenth faster, so that lead stabilizing at .6, but that's just close enough to where Ryan is going to be sweating at every single lap. He doesn't have that 10, 15 second lead he's been used to for a few weeks in a row. He is really going to have to be on his toes, can't make those mistakes, and if you're Mitch Heller, you can't make the mistakes. You have to know that you have a good car and run your line. There's still approximately 13 laps in this race, so there's not uh, you know, a paramount reason to uh, completely go off kilter here and over push. We still have a lot of laps and we still do have a pit stop here on the evening. Other than this battle up front, this is still the best battle on the track uh, outside of our, our lead battle, which is uh, only getting closer here, is Reed Rundle again trying to get back into the top 10. Um, he had that issue of uh, minimal sorts there that allowed Marin Pietri to get back by. And now coming through the final corner here, we do have Nathan Lafayette coming into the pits. This is early, but it's not a bad call. Pit right now, um, he'll fall to the back of the field, but that'll put him in some clean real estate. So he can run some flyers by himself, and uh, that may help him uh, versus running in traffic. But speaking of running in traffic, Heller has some serious traffic here as he comes through uh, the exit of the keyhole down the back straightaway into turn number four. This is the closest he has been to the rear deck lid of Ryan Robertson here. Now they're coming up through four and five, slow right-hander back down the hill, and now you're headed through the S's. And this is where the car starts to get really, really light uh, coming down the hill here. And now we're on our way to Thunder Alley down the hill and under the bridge here. A little bit of a wiggle there from Mitch Heller, but nothing of significance here. And now heading into turn number 11, left-hander, set yourself up for the carousel. Right-hander, you can take a little bit of a dive there. He did just that, did Heller, close right to the rear bumper. Can he keep the power down here off the final corner and heading underneath the starter stand? He lost a little bit of time there, but it seems probably from the keyhole through about probably turn six, I would give the upper edge to Heller. Uh, but the back end of the circuit, I think I would probably give it to Robertson. So we'll see if that trend does continue here through the keyhole. And now again, the, the run down the back, and you get to see from the drone cam here that Robertson got off of the keyhole significantly better Van Heller, but now the slipstream is going to work for that 303 down the long straightaway here. Whatever gap Robertson gained is decimated by aerodynamics there. And now we'll see. You can see he misses the first apex. I almost wonder if that's intentional to set himself up. I don't think it is intentional. And this is where Heller, through this technical section, seems to be a lot more consistent. But this is also a really big dirty air opportunity. So very interesting to see here. There was a side-by-side -side battle here a little bit further back. Uh, this is a, some really tight racing with Marin Pietri, Seneville, and now Dennis Griffin. Uh, Dennis Griffin by far having one of his best runs that I've seen him run um, really in his time in the series. Usually he's down there about 18th, 20th, but he's knocking on the door of a top 10. So clearly someone who enjoys this mid-Ohio sports car course does Dennis Griffin. But again, you can't keep your eyes off this battle up front. Uh, this is the closest he has been at this point in the circuit here. If he can get off turn number one and up the hill, and eh, not close enough for a dive, but if he can get himself through the keyhole here, this will be a good opportunity down the back straightaway. He's running a little bit tighter of a line, which is closer on entry. But that wider line that Robertson ran is going to get him a better run down the back straightaway. He lets him extend the lead. But here we come into turn number four. And I don't know if he's close enough. He's as close as he's been, but he's not going to make the dive. And we just spoke of Dennis Griffin. He just made his pit stop. He'll blend out 
Uh, right around 20. No, no. What a close call there for Dennis Griffin. Had a spin there as a slap car was exiting the pits there. Number 67 got loose. Dennis Griffin, there will be a new set of underwear. Amazon Prime overnight shipping for you. That's 67 of Gerald Livingston. Uh, just made a, made his case a very, very scary one. Uh, but Griffin does get by. No harm, no foul there. Is get our leaders closing in on the back end of the lap. And just as close as he can get. Oh my goodness, within millimeters of the back bumper. How is there any downforce helping that 303 turn? I don't know. I guess as slow as they are, it must not matter here. Robertson really going to be sweating it. Just makes you wonder how important this pit stop's going to be. This pit stop will make the race. Who takes the right amount of fuel? Who gets into their stall? Who has the best overall service time? This, uh, this is going to be the most important pit stop we've seen in a long time. This is the biggest, um, you know, uh, the biggest Superman versus Batman battle we've had all season. Um, these guys are just absolutely going at it. Two titans of the league going at it here at Mid-Ohio. Jeff Ryan in the five car in the pits. As uh, it is becoming a more populated place here, we currently have uh, Ed Sutcliffe, I think, in the pits as well, or just exited the pits, I do believe, back in the back, not quite sure, but pits are becoming more and more occupied here as this race does come to a close. It's just with this action, uh, we are already well beyond the halfway point, closing in on 12 minutes left in the race. Doesn't look like uh, Heller got through this current lap very well. Um, that one tenth of a second now up to three quarters of a second and let's see what this is the pits here to the left Not coming in this time by Keeping it on circuit once more. Maybe he slid it here and may have to let the tires cool down make another stab at it Sheldon Rosamond you can see him there He led the opening five or six laps and he has kept himself in third and he's still within range of these top two He's not fallen off so even though, you know, he got the lead kind of as a gift, he didn't just fall back, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth. He didn't fall back, you know, 10 seconds. He has stayed uh, within reason of these guys. If we pull up the lap times on the ticker, you can see 22.5. Mitch Heller definitely an off lap at a 23 flat. But Rosenbaum at a 22.8, Tommy at a 22.7. So those top four, even top five, Barrows, haven't mentioned him, but he's not too far off pace-wise. He's only a few tenths off pace-wise. He's back there in fifth, so uh, this is the, probably the most competitive lead race we've seen in quite some time. But just as I say that, actually, it does appear that Mitch may have uh, overexerted himself because uh, he's starting to slip here. Now it's back to a second. This may be the lap that these guys will be coming to the pits. Uh, we'll see what happens here back end of the lap. This is around the 10 minute mark. If he bears to the left, there will be a pit stop and that will be a no. Heller will also remain on circuit. Let's see here from this shot, you'll see if anybody peels or just, I guess from this perspective, they would just be going straight to the right side of your screen, uh, of which nobody is. So we will have some late pit stops, guys, just doing the least amount of fueling that they can possibly get away with. Last time by Heller, about two tenths of a second slower, but still, um, you know, he keeps it around a second. So he's still, Robertson does not have the opportunity to sit and just kind of chill. He's still going to be going at it, but he has a little bit more breathing room. We do have some more pit stops at Sutcliffe. He's now one of the pits I called him in a little bit ago. Uh, incidentally there, we got Jerry Miller, we got Nathan Lafayette. He has already pitted. Uh, he pitted from the fifth spot. He's now back in 20th, but does have some traffic ahead of him. Reed Rundle had a long pit stop, 14 seconds. Um, he pitted as well. We already called uh, Dennis Griffin in, so it must be coming any time now. These leaders will be coming into the pits. Again, Sheldon Rosenbaum staying on, and we're coming back through the end of the lap, and still everybody staying out one more time.
All right, so as we close in on the end of this race, I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a really exciting race here from Mid-Ohio. Two titans of the league going at it. It does look like Heller has uh, shaken off that rust he had for about two or three laps and has gotten back to roughly a half second. Again, it will just come down to this pit stop to see who ultimately uh, will take over this race win here. You can see Seneville and Marin Pietri have... Uh, managed to uh, run some close lap times here, close on proximity. Les Turner, a solid run for him. He's currently running an eighth right now. Uh, we got Andrew Humphrey, haven't talked about him. He is in seventh. Brian Irby in sixth. Again, Barros up front in that fifth spot as we still await final pit stop. This is by far the latest we've seen pit stops in quite some time. Usually these guys are pitting maybe around 12 to 10 minutes. Uh, but they are pitting as late in the run as possible. And you can see just in front, this may be a good lap to pit because you saw there on the long shot uh, that there are a significant amount of slower traffic in front. If you probably exit in the keyhole, you'll see it here down the straightaway. You can see some traffic not too far. They probably catch them within two laps. So this would probably be a very good lap to pit for Robinson to evade uh, catching that lap traffic because you know how lap traffic it can work in your favor, or it could be an ultimate detriment as uh, Todd Marin Pietri coming into the pit, still waiting on about the top 12, 13. But I would really, uh, if I was a betting man on DraftKings, I would probably say this will be the pit lap. And this is a pit road that drivers do have a big influence in. It's not a straight shot in. There is some turns there, you know, you can really gain, you can really lose. So I will be very surprised to see who comes into pits this time and if anybody chooses to stay out. And staying out one more time is, is Ryan Robertson, but... Now, Mitch Heller, as I was not paying attention, was looking here at the uh, different standing screen, Mitch Heller lost some time not sure if I saw him go off track or something. I don't know if I did. Take a look here. I was looking at a different timing screen for a brief moment. And yes, here I found it on replay. This is Mitch Heller coming down the hill. And complete just power slide here. I mean, if this was a drift competition, I'd give him a 4 out of 10. Uh, but that may be enough to give Ryan Robertson that breath of fresh air he needs to finish this one out. Five minutes left to go in this race. And again, it, Mitch Heller ran the race of the race of his life there, but here comes Tommy Ryan closing in on Rosenbaum. He hasn't been able to get by. Well, he'll get by this time by uh, because of a pit stop. Again, this you can see where that line is and there's a lot of turns entering that pit. So it is a very big driver's opportunity. And somebody there exiting the pits in the dirt. But here comes uh, Robert Barros into the pits. So we're still waiting. This is the probably the latest pit stop I think I have seen in this league in some time. J.P. Phillips closing in, uh, well, actually just getting passed by Barrows. J.P. has still yet to pit. So we're closing in on, this is going to be three laps to go. So this is going to be an ultimate splash. Uh, Rosenbaum and Barrows, they both pit with six second pit stops. We I see some pit stops here in the five second bracket. Um, so it's going to just be an ultimate splash of fuel that these guys need um, on this pit stop. And let's... Maybe they want to go for the ultimate here and just try to stay out the whole time. I don't even think that's physically possible, but here comes Ryan Robertson into the pits. You can see the little chicane that you must endure, and 
Uh, full send into that pit lane, and there comes Tommy Ryan just to his arrears, as does Mitch Heller. Brian Irby coming in as well, so we'll take a gander here, and what will the pit stop time be? He has enough of a gap at this point, no need to really push it. Uh, he had a few seconds over Ryan and Heller, so uh, he'll take a 5.5 second stop. Tommy Ryan, 4.6. He's going for the undercut there. Heller with a 5.6, so really big undercut there for Tommy Ryan. And it will gain him a little bit of time on circuit. It'll get him down to two seconds into P2. But, uh, yeah, roughly two seconds I think it'll average out to. Uh, and we're coming to that point where it will likely be three laps to go. We're taking about a minute and 27 seconds around this place. Currently, my timer is uh, advocating that we'll probably finish uh, 22 laps. Um, so I would estimate this will be two laps to go. Ryan Robertson again, even when he wins races, he wins some races in ultimate dominating fashion. And he wins races just because of what just happened where, um, you know, he was held right on the edge of control the entire race. Sebring last week, Tommy Ryan for the whole first stage, Tommy Ryan was right on the rear bumper of Ryan Robertson. And ultimately, um, Tommy Ryan fell off later in the race but this is kind of a similar circumstance where Mitch Heller probably was faster in my opinion, but Robertson held on and then waited for the mistakes and took over. And uh, Robertson himself made that mistake and I know he's gonna be apologetic to Tommy Ryan. Makes you wonder what would have happened if that first lap faux pas never happened. Tommy Ryan certainly has pace, if not faster pace at moments than, than uh, Ryan. Uh, but it was never fully able to overcome uh, that lap one issue. Yeah, most other battles on track have fizzled out. Uh, here at the moment, got Ryan and then Rosenbaum in third. Uh, Mitch Heller in fourth after his little Tokyo drift. And then fifth, we have Robert Barros. And now I believe this will be the white flag lap here at Mid-Ohio. For uh, Ryan Robinson, Barney does have the flag, and let's make sure he is displaying, yes, the white flag in the air, so uh, time will elapse. So again, Ryan Robinson will come around. He won last week at Sebring, and he's about half a lap away from another win here tonight. Coming through here, he dominated the race, led every single, made a faux pas, a very rare faux pas on lap number one. And that ultimately put himself in a spot where he had to come back, pass a couple guys, you know, get himself back into rhythm. He did just that, held off a hard charge by Mitch Heller. But ultimately coming through the final section of the track here, Ryan Robertson does Ryan Robertson things. And that's come through and dominate races. He's gonna come through the final carousel one more time. Come through the final corner here and then Barney will wave the flag for him. Ryan Robertson's gonna win here at Mid-Ohio. We got Tommy Ryan in second and Sheldon Rosenbaum led some laps and he will finish in third. So a great race here for the Red Sox guys. Very enjoyable race here. And uh, ultimately, second verse, same as the first, Ryan Robertson still getting a victory, but it did not come easy for him tonight.
I don't see any, uh, let's see, there may be a battle here. Uh, Mark Wilson closing in on McCarthy here. They had a little drag race back to the line for 17th. And I uh, see Jeff Ryan there. Um, but ultimately, again, Ryan Robertson with the win here today. So as these guys complete their cool down lap, remember they do have to get all the way back to start finish line under their own power to evade any sort of penalty. So while they do that, let's go down and give you the final rundown of results here today from the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Getting the win here tonight is Ryan Robertson by a final margin of 1.4 seconds. Sheldon Rosenbaum with a third. We got uh, Ryan uh, Robert Barros in fourth. Brian Irby in fifth. Les Turner in sixth. Uh, Marin Pietri, Centerville, Humphrey, and Griffin the top ten. Uh, I think we might have missed a Mitch Heller incident because he's not here on the page. Dave Hill in 11th, Nathan Lafayette in 12th, Jim Graziano in 13th. We got J.P. Phillips in 14th, Bill Paul Lucky in 15th, Dwayne McCarthy in 16th, Wilson Miller, Ryan, and Prostell are top 20. In our last page of results, we got Mitch Heller all the way back to 21st. Didn't see what happened to him, but another incident, another uh, mistake. Reed Rundle with a 22nd, Aaron Law in 23rd, Kevin Kyle 24th, and Moyer, Sutcliffe Harris, and Livingston rounding out our field. So we will just await our uh, our our pals here to come in and join us in the booth, and we can have a couple words with our uh, our race winner ryan should be in in a just a moment's time he's always in here for his interviews and uh very curious about his take on that first incident so we'll uh, we'll have to ask him and just as i say that here he is or ryan another dominating race but it did not come easy uh heller had you on your toes but i have to ask you about that first lap uh with tommy ryan i know you're probably kicking yourself for it but just a little bit too hard into four there what happened yeah i mean i didn't it was cold tires, cold brakes. I went for the dive, broke where I knew I could normally and just clipped too much ABS. And when I started the turn in, it was the overzealous move. And yeah, I, I'm so, I apologize, Tommy. It was, it was not a, it was not my finest moment. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, and well, and the thing was too, I mean, you got Sheldon just kind of the seas party. He took the lead and you had, it took a while to get by him. And then uh, obviously Mitch was on your toes. I think he maybe made one move on you. So even though you win these races in dominant style at the end, they're definitely not easy, particularly in that first end of the ra that first part of the race. Oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, part of it's just trying to take care, take care of the tires throughout the race, you know, watch it on fuel. I over fueled on this one um by a lap so but no i mean it was it, it was a good time i mean like i said those guys are all we're all around the same pace so <laughs> one little mistake and that's that's all it takes so yeah it is well next week man we head to the uh proverbial super speedway of road courses we head to watkins Glen. so um that's a track where usually the biggest competition in the league comes out so what are the odds you just go for the turkey and get them again next week? Uh, it's going to be zero. Unfortunately, I'm out next week. So <laughs> you hear that, everybody I, else? I'm, you I'm, guys can win. <laughs> yeah, and I, I would love to make the Watkins Glen. I always have a good time there, but unfortunately, it's a uh, it's a week I can't make. So uh, good luck to everyone else, and you know, I won't be there to side check Tommy on the first well, first lap. If you win race number five, I'll still say it's a turkey. It just has a little bit of a gap in the middle. Say so you went to the bathroom <laughs> for it. But uh, congrats on another win, man, and uh, we'll talk to you, I guess, race number five, presuming you get on the podium. Sounds good. Thanks, Car. See ya. And now second place, we got Tommy Ryan. Well, Tommy, uh, first off, uh, I know Ryan was very apologetic for that lap number one. Did you cool off from that yet, or is, do you feel like that may have been uh, your shot of the race gone? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I qualified better than... Um, better than I expected. I was hoping to be somewhere in the top five, but then when I got outside, Paul, I was pretty happy with that. And then he kind of blew the start and, and, uh, got in front of him. And I was like, man, I'm in clean air. Let me just see if I can do this. And I saw him pop out the last second at the bottom of the hill. I was like, man, there's no way he's going to make that corner. Um, mainly because, you know, we're still on pretty cold tires. So I kind of got really wide for him to give him as much room as I could. And we still made a little bit of contact, but. You know, I, I'm all good with it, as long as someone speaks up and says, hey, sorry, screwed up, which he did. So it's all good. We didn't die. Still got a podium. But yeah, I mean, it's disappointing, you know, but I mean, 
was I going to be faster than those guys? I, I doubt it. I mean, I could match them, but they were just more consistent at hitting faster laps. So I'm real happy with the run I had. So it's, uh, it was, I had a lot of fun. So I, can, no, I can't I, complain. Yeah, I wouldn't discredit yourself, man. You qualified only a couple hundreds back and you were matching laps. I mean, if you were closer and, you know, getting by is another thing, but you were matching laps last time by, you were actually two tenths faster. So don't discredit yourself too much. But next week we head to Watkins Glen, as I told Ryan, kind of the pseudo super speedway of road racing. Um, everyone usually has their guns fire in there. Uh, what's your confidence like at, at the Glen? Uh, yeah, exactly what you said. I mean, everybody knows that place. They know exactly where to put the car. So it's it's going to be real tight field um, on speed. So it's, it's really going to come down to execution and qualifying, get good track position, and who can make the least amount of mistakes. <laughs> and, you know, and hopefully, you know, nobody gets ran over because, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be fast. Uh, it'll be fast indeed, but... Uh, we'll see what you can do. Expect a competitive field, and I know you'll be uh, you'll be tossing it around in there, man. Congrats on still pulling off a second tonight. Yeah, thanks, Northern Tool and Equipment, and uh, thanks for Les. He has an incredible league, man. It's just a whole lot of fun. It's Sometimes I want more than 30 minutes, and sometimes I don't. <laughs> tonight, I, I needed about, you know, 15 more minutes to work on him. Well, but, uh, you know what? I agree with you there. Sometimes I want more, but I do like being in and out of these races pretty quick, too. So, uh, congrats, man, and we'll talk to you soon, I'm sure. All right, buddy. Thanks. All right. Well, that is a broadcast here on the channel. Some great racing here. And of course, congratulations. Do go to Ryan Robinson on another win here today. Make sure you like and subscribe. All that fun stuff. We'll be back live with some more action on Saturday night with the Spartan Sim Racing League. That's going to be Corey signing out of the booth. Have a great night and we'll catch you next time.